I have always been an admirer of Kirk Douglas, and um, I admire him even more after I read his autobiography. He's had an extraordinary career in motion pictures, around 80 films, starting in 1949 with Champion, uh, through Paths of Glory, Lust for Life, Spartacus, Lonely or the Brave, and on and on. He's been nominated for Academy Award three times. A fascinating autobiography called The Ragman's Son. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Kirk Douglas? <laughs> Good, yeah. This is a, I understand, is going through the roof. I mean, yeah. A very, as a matter of fact, the, the today they're calling from New York to tell me that on the New York Times bestseller list, it went from nine to six to four. And that kind of scared me. My yeah. first autobiography. Wow. I, I may give up movies. Maybe this is the business to go into. <laughs> Autobiographies normally do not do that well. I mean, you know, a lot of people in the entertainment have written stories of that. Freddie, how's your book do? Was it? It's not four, six, or nine. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know, I think, John, the, the difficult thing is to find a reason to write an autobiography. And you know, what happened to me is one day I was driving to Palm Springs, and there was this young sailor hitchhiking. I used to be in the Navy, so yeah. I picked him up. And he ran up, got in the car, he looked at me and said, do you know who you are? <laughs> now, you know, but I thought about it. It's funny, but that's a great question. Do yeah. you know who you are? And I thought about that, and after a while, I got to starting to think, you know, I'm always mixed up so much in the world of make-believe yeah. that what is reality? So that's what got me starting to write my autobiography to answer that question, who am I? Yeah, I found it fascinating. I found your early years when you, when you lived in New York, and your dad was, was a ragman, right? That's right. My father was an illiterate Russian immigrant that came to this country around 1910, like millions of others, and he uh, was in upstate New York. And I was surprised, because a lot of young people said, what's a rag man? I said, well, my father had a horse and a wagon. And he went around, and he collected rags and metals and, you know, uh, pieces of metal, iron and stuff. And we sold it. And that's how he made his living. I've often, very heard, poor. I've often heard that kids who grew up poor didn't realize at the time that they were poor, because they didn't have a great deal to compare it with. Were you conscious that you were really poor? Well, I think you have a point, although, yes, where we were poor, I was very poor. As a matter of fact, my wife, Anne, had some wonderful thing to say. She said, you know, the trouble with Kirk is he's a snob in reverse. One of these days, he's going to be shattered because he's going to meet somebody who was poorer than he was, yeah. and that's going to be shattered. <laughs> no, I was really poor, but I do think I have told my sons that they haven't had my advantages, because I had the advantage of being born in abject poverty. That means I had nowhere to go but up. Yeah. If my old man was a, a rich movie actor, I don't know what I would have turned out to be, probably a polo player or something. <laughs> yeah, that is hard to imagine, isn't it? In, in a way, I know what you're saying. And the thing. fact that they have the motivation to do something, I had to. I know your wife, Ann. Um, she must be rather understanding, because you detail in here um, a few escapades you have had over the years um, with some very nice ladies in Hollywood. Well, listen, John, you know, you and I have a lot in common. We oh, no, wait a minute. No, no, wait a minute. Oh, oh. Now, we, we both had a lot of girlfriends. Uh -huh. The only difference is I didn't marry everyone. <laughs> well, I think that was a decent thing to do. Also, how, did, how did this go down? I mean, how no. about the women who were around that you talked about? Did you talk with them beforehand and say, I might mention your name in a... Now, in this book here? Now, you know, John, you keep insisting. I'm trying to explain to you that this mm -hmm. is a... You know, there are a lot of children watching this show. And mm -hmm. in my book, it deals primarily they're, they're with my in, relationship with my father they're all in bed, and my right. relationship with my kids. I feel... We want to know, you, we know who sets, you scored with now. Come on. The parts, that, <laughs> the parts that deal with sex, John, yes. are there. And there are many people who are not interested in that. They can just flip over those pages and go on with the story. Well, then, why did you put those in? Because it, I think, seriously, that if you It was you're, an integral part no, of the plot. No, no, if you're trying... That's true. <laughs> no, but if you're trying to write your life story, life is love, death, and sex. That's true. Sex is a very important part of life, so you can't completely ignore that and aspect. And it's more fun life. than death, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is there... 
Uh, is there any, and I don't want to say uh, escapade or affair, but uh, is there any, uh, one of those little get-togethers that you didn't put in the book for various reasons that you thought maybe... You know what I'm talking about? Then we'll get to being you know poor. And all. <laughs> then we'll get to your struggle and how tough it was. But let's... <laughs> Let's, look, get, let's set that aside. No, look, look. I don't I care always, about your I struggle. remember <laughs> the, the lines of uh, a song that Willie Nelson wrote that I always liked. To all the... To all the girls I've loved before that wandered in and out my door, mm -hmm. I dedicate this song. Yes. I'm glad they came along to all the girls I've loved before. And I think that anyone that you've had any kind of relationship with in your life is important. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why? I mean, why can't I say something like that to you without you breaking into a smile? I'm not doing a thing. <laughs> I'm just sitting here. You're sitting here with a big grin on you. Because I'm trying to make a profound statement. Sure. My wife is watching this well, show. Of course she is. <laughs> Who'd you leave out of the book? <laughs> what? What's your best quality? What's my best quality? What do you quality? think is your best quality as a person, not as an actor? Well, I don't know whether it's my best quality, but I found out a lot about me in writing this book, and what I found out is that I have a lot of anger in me. It's an angry book. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm angry about things that happened many, many years ago when I was very poor, and I found that anger continues. And I think that that anger that I express in that book that's within me, that people who make imitations, you, know, you see Pete yeah. Gorsh and you always see them... Getting yeah. a, that anger. Yeah. 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 And I think that that anger, in a sense, has been a, a lot of the fuel that has helped me in whatever I've done. I mean, I, I can see it expressed in a lot of movies that I've yeah. done. So anger has been a big part of my life, and it's always with me, and I think it'll most always people, will be. Most people wouldn't think that is a plus, but in your case, it probably was. I What's think so. your worst? What, what don't you like about yourself? Gosh, that's hard to figure out. I mean, are you... <laughs> Are you impatient? Are you intolerant? Are you, uh, you know? Uh, I, I, yes, yes. I'm impatient. I, I think I, I think I'm very am, impatient. With I think I am very, uh, very impatient. And I think, as I try to tell my kids, I would never win a popularity contest in Hollywood. And I've tried to tell my boys, I've said, look, don't make the mistakes I've made. Because very often during my career, when I've argued and fought with people, I might have been right, right in what I said, but I was wrong in yeah. the way I said it. Yeah. So lots of times, what you say is loss because you're saying it with such vehemence that they don't even realize what you said. Yeah. All they know is he, he, was, he well, was yelling. Also, life can't be trying to win a popularity contest either. That's true. There's no way to go through it. Look, I, I know you've got other things to go. Before you go, tell the one story about the limousine when you were doing it. Was it Spartacus you were doing? Yeah, I was doing Spartacus. You know, I produced it. Uh, my company made it. And uh, I was working in it. We had all kinds of problems. It was, it was hard work. It was the biggest picture at that time. And it was Friday night, and I was dead tired. I was in my Spartacus costume, and Eddie Lewis, who worked with me on the picture, he asked me, what are you going to do this weekend? I said, boy, I'm dead tired. I said, I'm going to drive down to Palm Springs. He said, wait a minute, you're going to drive down to Palm Springs? He says, Kirk, you're a star. You're the star of Spartacus. This is your production. He says, let me get you a limousine. He says, and, you know, go, go there like a star. And I thought, you know, he's got a point. Why should I? I'm tired. Why should I? So I got a limousine. The guy opened the door. There was that nice silvery black in the back. And I lie down underneath his silvery blanket. And I'm thinking, you know, he's right. I'm a star. The guys in Amsterdam could see me now. I hitchhiked to, to college. I ended up on a, on a truckload of fertilizer. Here I am, a star <laughs> on my way to Palm Springs and limousine. And halfway down, the guy turns into, I said, what's my, you out of gas? No, no, he says, I have to go to the bathroom. Well, he turns into this, and I see a, a, a bar there, and I thought, well, I have a beer. And I get out of the car, and I walk over to the bar, uh, to the bar and suddenly I realize I'm in my Spartacus costume, I have no money. <laughs> so I feel kind of silly, and as I turn around, I see my driver get in the limousine. I say, look, my name is Kirk Douglas. My driver will be going through the town thinking I'm asleep. He said, look, don't be a wise guy, we'll, we'll run you in. Yeah. He doesn't believe me. Now, I got so mad, I mean, I thought, here I am. I mean, I start out in the limousine, and I'm halfway to Palm Springs in my Spartacus outfit. So I go on the road, and I hitchhike. In your Spartacus outfit. A couple of girls finally get me to Palm Springs, and in the meantime, my driver arrives there. My wife hears the car. I'm late. She comes out to greet me. He goes and opens the door, looks, 
runs back, and my wife said, hey, wait, wait what happened? You lose my husband? He said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're hitchhiking. That's a great story.